Hello and welcome. Next possibility, ADC, Analog Digital Converter, is the so-called Dual Slope Converter. Dual Slope Converter. How is this working? How is this Dual Slope Converter working? It looks pretty complicated, let's say. Yeah? Because, of course, I have an input voltage. This input voltage is the voltage I want to transfer. I want to transfer. Okay? This input voltage does have some value. And this value I want to have a number from it. As usual, as usual. Okay? And I will have here a switch and that do have a so-called reference voltage yeah? so-called reference voltage however this reference voltage is in the other polarity in the other direction reference voltage u ref yeah? there's a switch there's a switch which will switch between the reference voltage and the input voltage at a certain point in time. And then I do have a little something which is called integrator. Okay. And I just draw it now. It looks like this. That's it. That's the integrator. There is an R, and there's a capacity C, and that's it. And this thing here is a so-called operational amplifier. Oper operational amplifier, what does it mean? There is a separate video about this, if you want to know in detail. But in short now, oper operational amplifier is amplifying the differential voltage between here and here, yeah, with a factor unlimited. Yeah? So if there is any differential voltage, the output will get crazy. Yeah? Go up and down, whatever you need to go, to compensate this. Yeah? And another thing is that the current which is running inside here yeah, is zero. So we have zero amperes here. And in between, we always have zero volts. Yeah? Zero volts. Zero amperes, zero volts. This means, if I do have now this, let's say, UI here, I have this UI here on this R. Okay? This means, if I have a voltage and I have a an, an resistance, then there will a current. There will run a current I, and this current will not go in here because there is zero ampere. It will go up here, and whenever a current is running through a capacity, yeah, through a condensator, then this condensator is loaded. Yeah? Depending on the capacity, it is loaded faster or smaller. The current, I nail down the current with this I, with this R, the use of this R, yeah, and the capacitor will get charged. Yeah? Simply get charged. How do we proceed then? Yeah. We have some output here, yeah, which must be below. Yeah. Here we have zero. Then we have here the charged value of the capacitor. So we are minus. We have minus here. We are minus something. Yeah. If this is positive, if this is negative, it works in the other direction. And here we have a comparator. Yeah. Here I only compare. if I have an output zero or not. Yeah. This is the integrated voltage. I call it UC. Okay. Here we have UC and I check if this is zero or not. Okay. And now, how is this really working? Yeah. How is this really working?
so it is working. I use at the beginning, at the beginning, I use the input voltage. Yeah? Then the input voltage is here as you are. Yeah? It's the same as the input voltage we're running. And here we have UC. Yeah? This means UC, we have minus UC here, we have UC here. This means UC will drop. Yeah? And after a certain time, this is a fixed time t. Yeah? Some control logic, some control logic is switching to the reference voltage. Okay, there is a control logic. The control logic, and this is after the time it is switching to the reference voltage. The reference voltage is now in the other direction, yeah, and so this means the current will run in the other direction. This means the capacitor will be deloaded, emptied, yeah, and we will drop, and then. We need to measure this time here, T1. Okay. If the input voltage was higher, yeah, bigger, then we would have charged the capacitor more. Because, because if we have here higher voltage, more current is running through the resistor, more current is charging the capacitor. This means this would go faster. And after the time t, the control logic is again switching to the reference voltage. The reference voltage has not changed. This means the current uncharging the capacitor is still the same. Okay, this means I have a parallel unloading, these two lines are parallel, yeah? and I do measure a different time here, to measure a different time. T2. This means the longer the time is, yeah? the bigger UI was. And here, this is this comparator, if I am at zero again, yeah, there is an output. Then I have to stop the time, or I have to run the time if it's not zero. Okay, there's an end block, there's an end block, and then this I use at a counter. Counter. There I use a frequency. So this means this is not this is not if this is not a zero, I start to count yeah, with a certain frequency. And if it this is then zero again, I stop the counter. And if I count long, it was a high number, then I have a high counter value. If I count short, then it's a, a, a small number, then have a small input value. The only, the only thing which is still here a little bit messy is that I st would start to count here. I want to start to start the count here. So this means I would need an output of my control logic at this end. Yeah? That the control logic is telling me counter. Now please count. Okay. So there's the counter. This is counting. Yeah? There is also memory inside, like usual, let's say. Every time the count is ready, it will transfer its data to the memory. And this is my, then my analog ticket cycle is complete. This is my output. Yeah. Here I have the digitized value. And here I have my input value. And the counter is used to measure the time. There might be also some sort of display. 
this is pretty much always the same here. Yeah. Control logic also need to know also need to know a little bit so that there is maybe a frequency frequency divider that we do not count with I don't know what how many megahertz the control logic does not need to get too too much yeah. this is the usual thing of a dual slope converter okay. so the trick is always to load the capacitor in an integrator circuit load the capacitor a certain amount of time if the capacity load is high then the charging voltage was high if the capacity load is low then the charging voltage was low and then I do deload unload my capacitor at the reference voltage so I know how fast if it's fast it was unloaded fast I know the input voltage must have been low this account and that's then a value everything fits dual slope analog digital converter the things are often used in digital multimeters there's a separate video about what is a digital multimeter you can watch it I will link it yeah so that's one possible thing of an analog digital converter yeah. next time we will hear something about compensation variant yeah. also quite interesting for this time thank you very much for listening and goodbye